Good day learners! Welcome to TV Skwela! I am Teacher Aldran Heberola Daidai from Barabat Elementary School, New Bataan District. Today, we will learn about defining and illustrating the meaning of ratio and proportion using concrete and pictorial models. Are you ready to have fun? Then let's get started! Don't forget to have your paper, pen, and module with you. First, let us have some review. Can you give me the ratio of sun to stars as shown in the picture? Very good! The ratio of the number of sun to the number of stars is 2 is to 5. How about the number of hearts to the number of diamonds? Great! It is 4 is to 3. Now, let us take a look and solve this word problem. One hot day, mother uses two ripe mangoes to make three glasses of mango shake. She plans to make nine glasses. How many mangoes does she need? Let us find the ratio of the number of mangoes to the number of glasses. What do you think is the answer? Very good! 2 is to 3. For every 2 ripe mangoes used, 3 glasses of mango shake are made. And now, let us find the number of ripe mangoes needed to make 9 glasses of mango shake. Study this illustration. Do you have an answer now? Based on the illustration, what is the ratio of the number of mangoes needed to the number of glasses of mango shake? Very good! It is 6 is to 9. This means that mother needs 6 ripe mangoes to make 9 glasses of mango shake. Did you know that we can use another way to find the answer of our word problem? We can use a table to show mother's guide in preparing batches of mango shake. In this table, we have the number of mangoes, the number of glasses, the ratio of mangoes to glasses, and in simplest form. First, in every two mangoes, we can produce three glasses of mango shake. The ratio is two is to three. In simplest form, we have two is to three. Next, in every four mangoes, we can produce six glasses of mango shake. The ratio is four is to six. In simplest form, we have 2 is to 3. Next, in every 6 mangoes, we can produce 9 glasses of mango shake. Its ratio is 6 is to 9. In simplest form, we have 2 is to 3. Lastly, in every 8 mangoes, we can produce 12 glasses of mango shake. The ratio is 8 is to 12. In simplest form, we have 2 is to 3. Easy, right? Yes, very easy. What can you say about the ratios? Yes, the ratios are the same. When the first quantity doubles, the second quantity doubles also. The first quantity is the number of mangoes. Therefore, if you multiply it by 2, you can multiply also the second quantity which is the number of glasses by 2. You may do this whether in fraction form or in ratio form. And so, 2 is to 3 and 4 is to 6 are equivalent ratios. These two ratios form a proportion. 
The same goes if you multiply the first quantity by 3, then you multiply also the second quantity by 3. So, our first quantity is 2 multiplied by 3. The answer is 6. Then, our second quantity is 3 multiplied by 3. The answer is 9. We now have our second ratio. 6 is to 9. The ratios 2 is to 3 and 6 is to 9 are in proportion. From the table, what do you notice about the ratios 4 is to 6 and 8 is to 12? Do they form a proportion? Yes, they form a proportion because they are equivalent ratios. Let us take a look at more examples. Angelo prepares four different mixtures of orange paint. He then writes the ratio of the number of cans of red paint to the number of cans of yellow paint. In this table, we have the number of red paint, the number of cans of yellow paint, the number of cans of red paint over the number of cans of yellow paint. And the mixture A, we have three cans of red paint and one can of yellow paint. The fraction is 3 over 1. In mixture B, we have 6 cans of red paint and 3 cans of yellow paint. The fraction is 2 over 1. In mixture C, we have 8 cans of red paint and 5 cans of yellow paint. The fraction is 8 over 5. In mixture D, we have 12 cans of red paint and 9 cans of yellow paint. The fraction is 4 over 3. What can you say about the fractions? Yes, they are different. So, the numbers of cans of red paint and yellow paint are not in proportion. This time, try to solve what's more in page 6, number 2. Tony counts the number of square-shaped and heart-shaped biscuits in a container. Complete the following table. In this table, we have the number of squares, 2, 4, and 8. And the number of hearts are 10, 15, and 25. I will give you enough time to solve the problem. Your timer starts now. Time is up! Let us check. In the table, what is the ratio of the number of squares to the number of hearts? Very good! The ratio of the number of squares to the number of hearts is 4 is to 10. Can you give me the equivalent ratios? Great! Then, let's start with the first number. 2. In every 4 squares, we have 10 hearts. Therefore, if we have 2 squares, how many hearts do we have? Correct! We have 5 hearts in every 2 squares. Now, let's proceed to 15 hearts. In every 5 hearts, we have 2 squares. Therefore, if we have 15 hearts, how many squares do we have? Yes, we have 6 squares. Let us move to 8 squares. How many hearts do we have? If 2 squares have 5 hearts, 
Very good. We have 20 hearts. Lastly, 25 hearts. What do you think is the number of square in this set? Great! We have 10 squares. Remember that the ratio is a comparison of two or more quantities and two equivalent ratios form a proportion. I hope you are enjoying our lesson for today. You have done great in defining and illustrating ratio and proportion. For your assignment, answer what can I do? Numbers 1 and 2 on page 7. Have fun in discovering more ratio and proportion. So, it has been a wonderful day to all of us. As today, we have learned something new. Once again, I am your teacher Aldren Heverola Daidai from Barabat Elementary School, New Bataan District, saying, Dito sa TV Skwela, sa pag-aaral, sama-sama. Bye-bye!